Hey everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel and today I'm doing another video. Now, as you all probably know, today I am doing another interview with an incredible Next Step cast member. Last time I had Kate Roman, who plays Ariana on the Next Step, join me and kind of following in the theme of villains. Today I'm having a Next Step supervillain join me. She's very powerful. She used to be a judge on a dance TV show on the Next Step. She wanted to take down the Next Step and Rochelle in season eight and she also made a dramatic return in the next step season nine is France's studio head. That is right, today I'm interviewing Connie who plays Maria on the next step. Hi everybody, my name is Connie Manfredi and I play the most amazing character on the next step, Maria. I don't even know if I have a last name. I don't. I think it's just Maria and that's who I am. Hello. Thank you so much for joining me, Connie. Today we're going to be chatting about your time on The Next Step, really diving into your character um, and what really makes Maria one of the most, I would say, one of the most dangerous villains on the show. And thank you for saying it. She is. As Grace said, she's very iconic, very good at scheming. But to kind of start the interview, I want to take you right back to the start of your Next Step journey and really mm -hmm. talk about what was your audition process like for the show and how did you really hear about it? Okay, so, I mean, now I'm obviously a giant fan of The Next Step, but at the time of the audition, I did not know what the show was. And all I had heard was dance show, four kids of all ages, British, but also Canadian. And I was like, sure, why not? I know nothing about dance. This seems like a perfect fit for me. So I went to the audition and there wasn't any material. And at this time it was for season seven uh, about the dance mania plot. And the material that I had been given, all it said was they were looking for, I wasn't even being considered for one of the judges. It was like a choreographer or, or something like that, like not connected to the judges at all. And I was like, okay. So I wore, I think like a floral blouse. I'm like, this is <laughs> dance like. And I went to Amy Wright's office and she on a laptop had video of um, celebrities like walking the red carpet. And she said, can you just give some critique if you had to judge them, but positively not like ripping on them, but just what would you say? And I don't remember anything that I said, but I could tell that we were vibing. Shout out Amy Wright. And after the audition was done, she said, I'll be in touch. Like, I'll be in touch with your agent. And I was like, oh, okay, great. I hadn't heard something that direct before in an audition. And then really soon after we got the offer and all it said was Maria Judge. And I'm like, oh, I don't think that that's the same thing as choreographer. Um, and then here we are three seasons later. Yes, it sounds like your audition process was very different to what the dancers have to do. Oh yes, they did not make me dance. I don't know why that wasn't a part of it for me. Um, I would have absolutely nailed that. But um, no, it was just witty banter quickly and that was it. Yeah, no, it sounds very, very good. And it's kind of good you got to practice, I suppose, in some ways, your judging skills before you became one. And you mentioned about Dance Mania um, when you're talking about your audition process. So what was the overall Dance Mania experience like? I mean, you were, like you said, a judge on that um, part of the show. And what was it kind of like getting to be in the judge's seat? And did you feel like you were being part of a reality TV show? It was amazing, actually, because I had no expectations of anything. I didn't know what to expect. And so we were filming at um, downtown Toronto was the CBC building, which uh, is a Canadian network. And this was where they film some major broadcasts. So when we walked in, it was like a real, I don't even know what the word be, studio that had all of these audience, like a proper judges area. And it felt very, very official. And because I was new to the next step world as were um, Kevin and Ron who played the other two judges. We really just vibed and got to watch these amazing dances. So there was very little um, that wasn't completely authentic because the whole time I was like, like that was the year of the Alice in Wonderland um, number, which I'm sure everybody remembers because it was so iconic. 
And I remember just being like, what are we seeing? This is madness. So then when I had to kind of flip and end up being evil at the end, I was like, no, I don't want to. I just want to say everyone's amazing. It felt very real and really cool. Um, and the dance mania, like the spectacle of it and the level of real like tv production was amazing yeah i remember dance mania was just so visual all of that floor lighting up and everything it looked yeah. incredible and you're correct the alice in wonderland dance was just spectacular and i, I imagine it must yeah. have been hard to kind of say so many negative things about it i don't expect you felt a lot of that yourself well no and it was funny because thankfully in season seven i was kind of a decoy baddie like i was kind of presenting i from what i remember like kind of making it seem like I was really into it and being like the next steps, the one to watch. And it was Ron who was uh, Frederico and he was really kind of the, the mean judge. So I just remember them calling cut and him being like, you're actually all amazing. This was wonderful. I'm sorry for everything that I said. Um, so he had the hardest time of the three, but then when I kind of switched over, I felt bad because I was like, Oh, all of them are so amazing. And I have to pretend that I was not impressed. <laughs> I imagine it must have been difficult and I think like the reason your character had to do that was because of Rochelle so I wanted to talk to you a bit about what it was like working with Briar because Briar is such an incredible dancer and it must have been so yeah. fun to get to work with her. Yes it was amazing she's so otherworldly talented um I think when we yeah season seven again I didn't know much about the show and who was all there but I remember hearing like oh she was on I'm gonna say, like, I don't know, like, America's Got Talent. She was, like, on some big TV show already as herself, separate from Rochelle. And then I think she was on tour with J-Lo. Like, she was already a superstar. And then I just remember she was in this gold outfit doing, like, a million billion splits and flips. And I was like, what am I seeing? Does not compute. This person's so amazing. Um, and it was really lovely that... Uh, in season eight, we really got to have our our battles. Um, and it was great working with her. She's a total doll. We had fun. Yeah, she's absolutely incredible. And I've had the pleasure of meeting Briar before and she's so, so okay. lovely. Yeah, I met yeah, her I met her in I met her in England. It was really, really lovely. Oh yes, okay, amazing. Hence the poster up there. Yes, yes, of course, <laughs> hence the poster. Um, now, we spoke about a little bit to start with how Maria is probably one of the most iconic supervillains on The Next Step. Now, you've kind of spoke a bit about how hard it was kind of giving negative comments to the dancers, but in season eight and nine, we really saw Maria's evil side come out. So was it hard playing such an evil villain on the show? I mean, then it was easy at this point. <laughs> the thing that's so funny is that... So I'm I'm quite close with one of the writers on the show, Jan Caruana, um, who's played little cameos of different characters throughout her time there. Um, but we would always laugh every time that I would be asked to come back because I was like, again, like, what is with this woman's obsession with taking down these kids? So we would always really have a laugh that she's just this adult woman who's sole purpose in life is to just destroy the next step and nobody really knows why and no one's asking but we're having a great time not knowing um the the thing that i really try that i would hope the rest of the cast and the crew would feel is that you know i would say a mean thing or do a mean thing and then it would be done and i would be like i and what's everyone's hobbies like i would try to be so nice after not trying i mean i'm nice but i would really try to be like i'm not like her i actually care about all of you um but it's fun it's fun being the bad guy it's fun stirring up trouble because it it helps the heroes that we're rooting for have to work harder and and then they achieve so much higher so i'm happy to kind of take one for the team and be the bad guy so that our our good guys can shine even more but at this point it's just fun i just like showing up and causing mess and then leaving oh, i mean it's good it's fun i mean it must be kind of interesting to kind of play around with different things that you obviously wouldn't say in real life it must be quite fun to kind of see what life on the evil side must be like it is it is and and i'm really thankful because i've been around that crew now for a while so the writers and amy and everyone romeo the showrunners everybody feel I feel their trust in me to go. She can just kind of go off and they'll just let me improvise and rattle off a million different 
things. Like I feel like they always let me have like a grand entrance and it's always something like, guess who's back or some sort of like ridiculous phrase. And so they'll let me just go. So I really feel thankful that they trust that I get what they're trying to achieve. And so it feels really like we're, that's the dance I'm doing is like, giving them as many options as possible and then I watch it and I'm like oh that's what they picked okay good surprise for me too no it's really really good and Maria's kind of been part of so many iconic moments on the next step and if you could pick one scene or one moment that you've been a part of on the next step what would be kind of your favorite scene you've been part of Ooh, that's a good question I mean there's a lot of a lot of ones that stand out to me definitely in season eight when you know it's revealed who wins and i kind of have to do my walk of shame through everybody that is just like they got me again uh i really like when maria gets embarrassed in front of the whole group which i think season nine is all out now right so season nine i also got a little bit egg on my face again and um you know i always like <laughs> when I have to kind of do, uh, I mean, I'm a hundred, so people might not know Scooby-Doo anymore, but there was like, I'll get those kids. Like, I always like when she gets to be embarrassed, but still has her head held high. Um, but definitely getting the, the veil lifted in season eight was great. Season nine, um, I really liked when Brienne did her her toast of like to new friends and to old friends. And it's like, I'm the last person anybody should be expecting. And then I show up and everyone's like, what? Again? Um, but really every scene that I get to do is fun because everyone that's involved with that show is, is working so hard, so much harder than me. And uh, I really feel like I just kind of get to ride their coattails so i have a great time anytime i'm there oh it's amazing you have so much fun on the show i mean it must be such a fantastic so thing to be surrounded by um so i'm really really good th to hear that um now nationals in season eight you've briefly mentioned about it but yeah. i wanted to talk to you about nationals because in dance mania you were kind of the judge watching from the audience but in nationals you were kind of watching from the sides but also plotting to take down the next step so kind yeah. of what was that experience yeah. like yes it was so much fun Danielle and I had a great time just kind of being off to the side, you know, plotting against all the next steppers. And then I got disappointed when she kind of went good. But uh, Lucien and I had a great time in the wings. It was so electric working with him, too, because he's like such a like lore. He's like on the Mount Rushmore of the next step. So getting to meet with him and kind of have our moments of like new generation villain. And we were both kind of off to the side. And then, you know, you're watching them do these amazing dances and you're like, don't be impressed. Have a face of scowl. Like, I remember one of the directors being on the mic, like, look less happy. Be upset that the kids are doing well. And I'm like, I can't. They're dancing their hearts out. It's amazing. But the whole Nationals thing was so funny. And, and the location where it was all filmed, the, like, art center was so beautiful. So, again, it's these, like, amazing stages with this incredible lighting and all the design costumes everything it really it felt real which is i would think why so many people resonate and are fans of the show because it really does feel real so it was real for me too it was fun that's amazing and i think why the next step's so good like you said is because they pick such fantastic venues for their competitions and you know yeah. season nine was an exception to that because obviously we had it at um, the studio, but they still made yeah. it incredible. I mean, I'm assuming you saw yeah. all the incredible set they built. It was so good. That set is incredible. Like everything happens there. That's where all the fittings happen, hair, makeup, the sets are built there. Every single set on the next step is in this one warehouse, um, just outside of downtown on the West end of Toronto. It's phenomenal. Like it's a one-stop shop. Like they really, um make the most of that space like that little kind of 50s milkshake diner is there uh the like dance studio itself is there all the performances it's like an incredible space yeah i mean it looked it and it just looks so good and I, they obviously surprise me every year with their cafe it's always changing right <laughs> 
Yeah, it's really, really good. And kind of sticking with season nine, I think you kind of said earlier, you returned to the show after Grace did a very dramatic toast to everyone. Um, but yeah. what was it like making that dramatic return? And how did you feel returning to season nine? Oh, it was so funny. It, like every time they call me, I just, again, I have to laugh because it's the last thing I'm expected or expecting because every time my character leaves, I'm like, well, surely this woman is just going to go live her life get a new hobby, find a new studio to terrorize. And then it's like, oh, Maria's back. And so um, season nine was so fun. Getting to work with Brienne was great because she's such a sweetheart. Um, and seeing her really rise. Um, and like Emerly as well, like seeing all the our favorites from past seasons really rise into these like leadership roles and seeing them, you know, command the groups and lead their peers was like really, really wonderful and inspiring and like me and Brienne would have little laughs in the corner because a lot of what we would do was just be off like spying and watching and so I had a really great time working with her um but it was great making my return and um it's fun seeing all the new students because now we have like team France which I guess I was in charge of or helped lead and I was like this is hilarious and and the kids are so amazing and so talented and so many times we'd be waiting in between setups and I'd be like okay so what's happening now and who is who and who do we hate and who do we like and then they would kind of fill me in on the plot because I'm just so focused on what I'm doing and there's the scripts are so dense because there's so many characters and so many plots that team France really held me down this season and they were like okay this team we like this team we don't this is who this is I was like uh, amazing so team france love you all team france was so good and everybody just looked like they so good i really want one of those jackets they were so nice weren't they i'd like one as well so nice and um, now sticking with kind of like the season nine vibe, I don't know whether you've seen, this isn't on the question list, but I want to talk about it with you if that's okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, so since season nine's came out, there's been a bit of a plot hole that's being discussed um, to do with uh -huh. Maria. So I wanted to like get your take on it. Oh no, <laughs> I'm not the one to ask. I know, I'll explain it to you first. So it's all okay. good. So um, I don't know if you know, but Kenzie, who um, Emily plays, um, yeah. she was the exchange um, dancer for France's team. And obviously right. she's no Maria from Dance Mania Nationals. Right. Um, but when Kenzie went to France, she didn't know that Maria was studio head. So I know it's a random thing, but where do you think Maria was? Was she actually studio head, do you think? Or was she off doing something else? Oh, I mean, I don't know if this will even tie in at all. But my assumption is Maria was just in, pa in Paris, in France, recovering from from her her you know emotional wounds of season eight and then maybe heard that emerly was the exchange and was like ding 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 i will get my revenge now so maybe that's what happened i'm thinking she was just like eating a baguette on the street and got you know an anonymous she probably has like a next step alert <laughs> to keep track and found out that uh miss kenzie was was uh switching over temporarily and thought aha uh -huh, time for me to make make some moves and then she probably just you know found her way to buy the team <laughs> connie's theory is a little bit more realistic than what i had to say a few weeks ago so um the taylor swift eras tour was in paris so i feel like maria maybe went to the eras tour i feel like that's a possibility True, I mean, Maria does do some crazy things. She does. She'll stop at nothing, so... Honestly, I mean, Maria goes to some crazy lengths. Um, and you were just kind of talking about working with um, Brianna, who plays Grace in season yeah. nine. Um, you've worked with lots of different people over your time on yeah. The Next Deck, but is there anybody who is kind of your standout, who is your favourite cast member to work with? I mean, I don't know if I could say favourite, because really... I had such a gas with everybody, but I will say after three seasons, Nick and I got our moment, my boy Miles, we really had a time because we've been pushing that we needed to get Nick and Maria to really finally have their, have their moment. And so when it finally came this season, we really, I remember the way it was set up as I was doing another, like on one of my entrances, 
and I'm not, I'm not even caught up on all the episodes yet, so I don't know what they ended up using, but we just had a run where I would just walk in and just like insult Miles. And we just did as many as we could. And he was like, I'm concerned as to why these are coming to you so fast of just terrible things to say to me. Um, but Miles and I had a blast. It was so nice getting to actually work with him. I mean, everyone's an adult, obviously, but we kind of feel like more of the, um, adult non dancers and, and we're buddies in outside of the show. So it was nice to get to have our, get to have our time this season. Oh, that's lovely. And it's good that you kind of get on outside of the show as well. It must have been yeah. so fun getting to do that. Um, I hate to kind of be the breaker of bad news, but I don't think they put any of your insults in in that scene. What? <laughs> when I tell, maybe because they were too mean. That's my guess. Yeah. My guess is I mean maybe I was simply too, too mean to Nick, but maybe we can petition for some BTS. Maybe we can ask, we can ask um, the crew, the crew that's in charge of editing to put together a little, a little video because they were good. True. I mean, it would be really cool to see them. I think the bits they kept in where you kind of came in, um, announced that you were back and then um, Miles came over and was like, what are you doing here? And then you were kind of like, yeah, just not being mean, but you were kind of like intimidating. But you, I don't think there were any insults that were left, unfortunately. It's also very possible they were all just in my mind as my character. So who knows if I even said them out loud? We'll never know. I feel like I did, but maybe they were just, maybe it was just an internal conversation that Miles and I were having. You never know. I mean, it would be never really, know. really cool. I mean, your character has so many different things about it, but... What would be the thing that you'd change about Maria? Is there anything that you'd like to see differently if you got to come back in season 10? If I were to come back in season 10, I think it would be fun if we had a moment where we learned, and, and I just also want to know, like, why she does not like the neck, like what the act, cause we know, you know, the surface reasons about why, but what's the real reason? Like who hurt Maria? Like I would love to see like a flashback of young Maria trying to be a dancer or, or being scorned in some way, or I want to know who hurt you girl. And why are you this way? Um, so I would love to see a moment like that. Maybe like a bit of a redemption, and maybe someone from the next step is like, oh my gosh, she actually is just like a hurt woman. Um, but then the twist is, it was all a lie and I'm so mean. I think it's just fun to just have a villain be a villain. But I do think Maria's, if she's going to come back, she's got to start being a bit, a bit smarter, a bit sassier about how she's going to get to the next step. Because at this point, if they don't see her coming, then it's the next step's fault at this point. <laughs> True. I mean, Maria has, like, done some insane things. I mean, I'm sure you... It's, I mean, it's sure you absurd. Know. It's absurd what this woman does. And I... And I, I I put no cap on it. Who knows? They say jump, I say how high, and I'll, I'll wear a beret when I do it. Honestly, I mean, anything could happen if there's a season 10. Anything can happen. Honestly, it'd be great to see Maria back. Um, now, I want to give you the opportunity to kind of share any behind the scenes stories or moments that you have during your time on The Next Step, if you've got any. Oh my gosh. I mean, there's so many. A lot of it is just getting to know, I mean, I call them the kids, making me sound elderly, but like getting to know the dancers, a little bit about them, like, um, you know, like chatting with Ozzy during season eight. Um, <laughs> Ozzy, that's his real name. To me, he's Ozzy. Um, and just learning about him and learning about his life and where he lives and what he does outside of dance. And like seeing all of these kids have these amazingly diverse and varied careers, even though what they're known for is the next step. Like they do so much, like so many of them are auditioning for like music videos and other projects and creating their own work outside of the show, which is so demanding and getting to, you know, hang out with them backstage while things are being set up was always really fun. I mean, probably the wildest one was in season eight. We were doing one of the, one of the stuff, one of the scenes for nationals and the fire alarm went at the, art center and so we all had to go outside but it was raining and so I just have these videos I think Miles posted one of them where there's just the fire alarm going off 
and it was in the middle of COVID. So we all were very much still wearing our masks and he's like the next step. And then we go outside and it's just the entire cast, the entire crew huddling under this tiny little barricade waiting for the fire alarm to end. And all of us just being like, that's showbiz baby. Fire stops for nobody. Um, but that was hilarious. Um, and yeah, the end of season nine was really fun because I was there for the rap day, which isn't always the case for me. Um, and so there was a party with karaoke in the big studio room and lots of food trucks and everyone just got to hang out and celebrate their great work. Um, basically, all the backstage stuff is fun because there's no trailers. Uh, the way it works there is everyone kind of has a little change area in a row but there's kind of a green room where everybody goes eats together hangs out together so there's no real division which is nice because sometimes when you are shooting something you do your stuff and then you leave and you go kind of separate from everyone and then come back again but on the next step everyone's really kind of hanging out the whole day so it's very special uh, it just sounds like such an amazing environment like you've got so it many is, it is it really is it's just great to hear all the memories you've got from the show. It just sounds incredible. So thank you for sharing those. It was great to hear about them. Oh, my pleasure. Um, now, thank you for chatting with me today, Connie. It's been great to find out about your time on The Next Step. What really is like what it's like playing the character of Maria and overall just your time on the show. So thank you so much. Oh, my absolute pleasure. Thank you. You're most welcome. And also thank you to everyone who watched this interview. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you soon for another video. Bye, guys.